What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Love & Hip Hop Miami Season 1, Episode 7. So I was all prepared to take my notes for that sorry-ass New York franchise, and it didn't come on last night. So we only got Miami today. Okay, you guys, and not too much happened, so we should be able to get through this pretty quickly. Let's get to it, shall we? <laughs> Guys, so let's start with your favorite rapper, Trick Daddy. He said that he had to calm down from all that joy shit that last time that they was all together. But uh, he getting it together now. You know, he cooking up a real heart attack inducing meal for his boy, um, Chronic. Chronic, come on by. And Trick just lets him know that Joy wants out. Trina and Don are her representatives, evidently. Damn it, if she wants a damn divorce, he gonna give her a damn divorce. Because this marriage is over. One minute she love him. The next minute she don't love him. The next minute after that, she love him again. Okay, they've been going back and forth, I think, what did Trina say, about four years now? Trick says, I'm gonna beat her at her own game, though. You know, he take a page out of the book of Kenya, throwing that divorce party for old Cynthia, the I do, I did, I'm done party. Okay, she wanted, it, then he gonna give it to her. Now, Joy is at her salon, I suppose, and she is doing Don's hair. Next thing we see, two strippers walk in. You know, Joy looking like, who is this? I hope I ain't gotta beat a bitch ass in front of these cameras. <laughs> anyway, the girls give her this big old envelope. Don was like, what is that? Joy opens it up. It's the banner for the party. I do, I did, I'm done. Trick is giving her what she wants. Ain't this nigga got his damn nerves? All them years that I gave him. Don was like, yeah, he says, though, that you, um, you know, once he found out that he was sick with lupus, you was done. And she was like, ain't this about a bitch? A nigga had lupus for 10 years. If I was going to be done because he had lupus, I would have been done at the beginning of that, not now. Trick Daddy has changed. I was like, yeah, the motherfucker crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now you see it, okay? You know, Trick is a special type of crazy. You know, it take a special kind of woman to, to put up with him. So she was like, fine. If you want to give me this damn divorce party, then fine. But if he want to, you know, act crazy and give me a divorce party, then good. All right, I'll be there with bills on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring these bills to these lawyer bills. Since he got all the money, he can pay for these damn bills as well. They don't know what the hell they want. Okay, it don't take no four years, just like Trina said. It's a whole bunch of people standing on the stairs just looking at me. <laughs> the officials up in this building, they probably like, what the fuck is going on, y'all? Anyway, let me, let me continue on. So, <clears throat> yeah, them two don't know what they want. And I think they both are just comfortable just kind of staying with the relationship the way it is in this kind of, you know, in between. We halfway together, we halfway not. We friends sometimes, other times we love us maybe, you know. I don't know. Next is Veronica. She's in the studio. She got to work hard. She's not a millionaire like JoJo says that she is. You know, she's regular from the hood. So she has to, um, you know, she has to work for whatever she gets. I was like, oh, girl, the hater in you. It's not really the nicest thing to be. Okay, bitch. All of these girls I can't stand. Anyway, let's get through this little part. So she's invited Steph to come and listen to her ladies tracks down so after she gets out you know Steph was like oh girl that was hot you know Veronica was like girl let me just tell you what happened the last time I was with Jojo so then she get to telling Steph about what happened with Jojo and really she gave her the abbreviated version because she go from you know telling Jojo that she messy for telling tomorrow the shit that she had told her in confidence to saying the bitch is a millionaire she don't fuck with the hood okay and Steph was just like oh so the hood is bad right now well the hood ain't never been the best I think most people if they really could would try to get their ass up out of the hood but I'm more concerned with the fact that Veronica didn't really tell her the whole entire story kind of made it seem like you know Jojo even though I don't really like Jojo either but Veronica really tried to make it seem like you know she just she just went from zero to a hundred real quick no, there was a build up there. Most of it was because of your nasty ass attitude. Steph tries to reroute her. Listen, you got this smash hit about to come out. Don't be worrying about. It. Don't let that bitch get you off your. You know, don't let her get her, get you off your square. So while they sitting there talking, who should walk in? But Trina. Okay, Trina said that she was working on some vocals. I guess in another adjoining studio. So she come in there to see how they was doing, what they was doing. Veronica says how Trina was the only person that would fuck with her at one time. You know, you know she ain't never forgot that. You know she appreciate Trina for that. Okay, good. Then Trina says, you know, I did want to talk to you though. Because it's, you know, some of the homies, they got a problem with, you 
you know, you saying nigga in your song. So then they show clips from this song. I don't I don't know Veronica Vega's music, so. But evidently she has this song and she keep on saying, um, uh, well, what the fuck did she say? I, I think I wrote it down. Niggas ain't shit or something like that. Niggas ain't shit, niggas ain't shit. Something like that. And, <clears throat> you know, Trina just kind of wanted her explanation and Veronica gives her this whole explanation that she's from this hood and, you know, she feels that she should be able to say the word because she's from this certain area. And I'm just sitting there listening to this like, okay, unless the game has changed, I need you guys to put me up on game because really... Y'all know how I feel about it. I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with me saying even the word nigga, but you know, I, we didn't already talked about it. Th that is a word that I have continued to say and I have no problem saying it. However, I don't want somebody who is non-black to say the word nigga. It don't even make sense to be trying to explain because then people get in my comments and they be like, you should not even say the word because it is about the this and the that of the black person and... <laughs> I got all that, y'all. I got it. For real, I do. But um, still, let the black people deal with the fucking word amongst themselves. We don't really need somebody that's outside of the community to be saying it. I don't know what to say about these things because when we start talking about Puerto Ricans, I don't know what, is Veronica Vega Puerto Rican? She's a white Puerto Rican or she, you know, when we get to talking about Puerto Ricans and all of that, see, to me, before I started doing YouTube and everything, you know, when I look at you and if your skin was black, then bitch, you was black. And if I looked at you and you didn't look black and you was maybe Latina, then you was not really black to me. But then people started telling me, oh, no, they black, too. They just, you know, from Puerto Rico and this and that and the other. And child, I ain't had time to be splicing and dicing up these races and cultures and what everybody is. And, you know, so then I was just like, fine. If you guys are okay with Puerto Ricans saying the word nigga, then fine. Okay, but when I think about it, I'm just saying, I, I, I don't know how comfortable I would be with, you know, Veronica saying something like, what's up, my nigga, to me. I would look at her very interesting. You know, I would be like... <laughs> So I'm not really sure. I just want you guys to tell me what you think about that. Do you guys consider all Puerto Ricans still people of color? Y'all just tell me. Because, child, I don't know. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave all that alone. But um, And Trina says she's going to leave it alone, too. Okay? If the girl feel that she, you know, from the hood and she want to say the word, fine. Okay, let her take her ass on down to <laughs> niggas in gardens and... <laughs> <laughs> it was to see how she how that shit would fly if she come on saying that shit over there. You know, maybe though. I mean, there's a lot of Mexicans. I, maybe they in L.A. and maybe they say the word nigga. Y'all just tell me what y'all think about that. Now, Scrappy, you know, he say he feeling real good. He didn't move down to Miami for a fresh start. And what does that fresh start entail? That's right, you guys. He's going to be hooking up with his girl, Bucky, in her hair. He knows Bucky in her hair can't resist him. So she comes over to the house. You know, she's just all like, you know, why am I here? And he was, you know, he said he going to do something <laughs> special is naive for her. So they sit down at the table. And uh, I guess they're going to have a real romantical like dinner. Of course, he is still very very high. He's still got these fucking, you know, old dirty bastard like braids in his hair that I can't stand. And I was just like, that is such a turn off to me. Like, I've never liked men who were high um, and always high, you know. That like kind of makes me feel like if he's always high around you, you know that there's something wrong here. But Bucky in the hair seems to be, you know, enamored by it. He's telling her the same scrappy shits that he always says, you know, how, you know, she the only woman that knows him and, you know, he ain't going nowhere and she ain't going nowhere. You know, just, you know, nigga talk. That's, that's how they do sometimes, child. She's saying that she knows that she should run, but, uh, you know, like I said, she's enamored. She, she has to listen to scrappy. She can't help herself. I just was embarrassed this whole season for Scrappy on this show. It was just like such a bad look. Now, later on, Bucky in her hair finds out that Scrappy been running around with puss and boots to feline girls. And, uh, you know, she can't. She can't have no shit like that. Now, you know, she gonna have to go and maybe fuck somebody up. She know that um, uh, DJ Pooch and, and, and what the other one name is, Liz and all that. 
they ain't really bodied bodied like that, you know. She gonna have to get her bodied bodied girls with her, you know. So Don, fuck, that's the closest to bodied bodied she gonna get. She don't know Kiara. So they gonna have Puss in Boots, the feline girls out there to the top of some hill or somewhere, you know, so they can, you know, talk woman to pussycat. So then while they sitting there waiting, up drives Chinese Nikki and uh, Chinese Kitty. Okay, so Puss and Boots get out the car, and, you know, everybody's sort of like, well, what's up, you know? Chinese Nikki was like, she said that she wanted to meet on some old woman-to-woman shit. Okay, I hope I ain't got to fuck her up out here. So then, uh, Mona... Mona was like, bitch, we ain't having that shit today. They got the long ass, you know, parade barrier <laughs> between the middle of them. <laughs> you know, they got Puss and Boots over on that side, got Bucky in her hair and Don on this side. And Chinese Nikki was like, well, why are we here? And Bucky in her hair was just like, you know, I just wanted to talk to you. You know, last time that we got together, somebody came and pulled my hair. I was just trying to figure out, like, why was everybody trying to jump on me like that? And Chinese Nikki was like, okay, you know what? That was a misunderstanding. You know, all I heard was a whole bunch of bumping. I didn't see my daughter. Shit, I thought she was fighting her. And if you're trying to beat up on boots, then I'm going to have to handle it. You know, so um, Bucket in here was like, okay, okay, I got that. That's right. Okay, you're going to protect your cub. I understand. <laughs> Like, girl, why are you trying to act like you just so whored? Bucking her hair, whored. So then she was like, okay, so that's done. So then we move on from that, okay? So then, you know, Bucking her hair was just like, I didn't understand why you was jumping in the fight anyway if I'm talking to Gabby. And Boots was just like, well, that's my girl. And, you know, I was just trying to find out exactly what was going on. So then all of a sudden, Bucking her hair and Chinese Kitty start arguing, okay? And Chinese Nikki just gets really upset. Y'all, did y'all ever just look at Chinese... Did y'all look at Chinese Nikki's face? Now, Chinese Kitty, is she actually is still, you know, she's still normal looking, but that Chinese Nikki, child, them eyes, they look like they... <laughs> My mama said, don't trust nobody with close set eyes, child. Them eyes is close, and then she got these huge-ass cheeks and then these lips. I was just like, what is going on? Child, it's like a damn walking Petri dish just embodied right in front of you. <laughs> I was just like, girl, you let somebody fuck your face up like that? Oh, she looked like she probably wasn't a bad looking girl. I hope her daughter stops. If your mama ain't an example, you're going to look just like that. Okay? Uh-uh. Just no. So then Don jumps in and she was just like, is these the bitches that was hanging with Scrappy all on his IG? And a buck in her hair was like, yeah, these the bitches. And they was just like, what the fuck? Are you really about to sit up here and argue with us about this nigga who don't even want you? I was just like, exactly. Bucky in her hair is such a fail, you guys. She's such a loser. Loser. <laughs> Bucky in her hair says, you know what, bitches? I am shutting down anything that goes on with Scrappy. Whatever y'all think y'all got going on with Scrappy, he don't want you with your ugly ass bitch. I was just like... Child, they got to calling her an anteater, <laughs> and he, she was calling them all kind of names and all this, and I was just sitting there looking like, again, you are arguing with these girls over a man that you are not even together with. Can you guys be a couple before you be riding so hard for this nigga? Child, Scrappy don't know if he coming or going. It's high ass. I was like, ooh, Bucky in the hair, you really made a fool out of yourself this season. Now, Mara La Negra, she says the life has been quiet. She's dropped all of that shit with, um, you know, people trying to tell her about her color of her skin and everything. She knows she's fabulous, so she is going to focus on her music. And I said, very good. Everybody walking by the car again. And because she's been so stressed, you know, she's going to go and hang out with her favorite girl, you know, her mama. I was just like, something is not... I understand hanging out with your mama. Look, I love my mama to death, okay? We used to go to the malls, we'd go shopping, you know, go to church together. We had all kind of things to do, but I'm just like, I don't really know if I'm trying to party with Ruby. I can't even see myself partying with Jada. It's just certain things I just don't need to do. And I'm a way more hip mother than Ruby was when I was Jada's age. Anyway, let me continue on with this. So, they go to the strip club, and after they leave the strip club, they go outside, and Amara La Negra is just telling her mom that, you know, she thought this crossover into the American music is was going to be, you know, easy, and it has not been easy for her, you know, so she's been really frustrated. And mama says, well, you know, I know it's been difficult, but I'll do whatever I can do to help you, you know, and the mom has always had her 
back all this time. And, you know, all of a sudden, the Mara La Negra starts crying and saying how, you know, I've been out here working and I'm putting on clothes that I cannot afford and wearing these purses that I cannot afford. And I, I was like, what, what, why is we crying? <laughs> I couldn't understand why we was crying, y'all. Now, listen, we done all had that, you know, that pit in our stomach when, when we looked at our damn checking account for like 20 minutes. It was like, motherfucker ain't got enough money for these bills. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> Nigga, ain't nothing like when you just be trying to calculate it, bitch. You recalculate, nigga. You done pulled the damn, you know, piece of paper. You done wrote down all your figures. And, nigga, you done wrote it out and calculated and carried the one. And that shit is not working. Okay. Then you go back and you type onto the computer. And you look at that motherfucker on the computer screen. That shit still ain't working. So then you call your girl. Child, you be telling your friend about your bills. And then your girlfriend catch it and be like, no, no, no. Remember that your car note is due on the 20th. You be like, that's right. That's why I called you. <laughs> Bitch been broke. Trust me. I know how the game goes. And it can be very frustrating. Okay. But I'm trying to figure out, like, why is we crying? All right, just so melodramatic, you know. The mama says she'll go get a damn part-time job. And then Amara Lenega says, oh, no, I don't want you to ever get a job. You know, just be my mom. And I was just like, child, y'all doing all this outside the strip club. <laughs> oh, the most. Later on, Amara Lenega meets with... um somebody who was going to help her put her music on the radio, okay? And she's real thankful to this person. The person walks in, and it's young Hollywood. I was just like, mm. I know it ain't just me that see these googly eyes between the two of them, even though um, I don't think that they are together right now. But I was just like, y'all know that there is some attraction there some sort of way. Anyway, he's going to help her get on the radio. So they get into the, um, you know, the woman, the Kocha. I think that's the lady's name. What is it? Steffi Kocha? Some shit like that. Child, what was the lady's name? Anyway, the DJ. They go in there and, you know, the woman is saying how, you know, she's been wanting to hear somebody hot and somebody new and fresh and young hollywood has amara la negra he wants um her to hear amara la negra's music how did you get to know her and he's like well the shit started off a little rough i was just trying to keep it real but maybe kept it a little too real and amara la negra actually caught that but she was like i'm gonna let it go because i said i'm gonna let it go okay but the nigga was being a little slick when he said that anyway we move on along because bitch we got to get this damn album on the damn radio right so um, the girl says, let me hear the music. And so Amara La Negra gives her the music. They listen to it. And it's a bop. So again, maybe we are going to be um, hearing her music, you know. And as far as her being upset about not making it, you guys all know that she already got her multi-album deal, multi-record uh, deal. And um, she's definitely making the climb to... Oh, God, this nosy ass bitch. Anyway, she's definitely making the climb um, to, uh, stardom, so she should be okay, y'all, we ain't worried too much about a model of negra. Now, Kiara, okay, you know, she's mad about this drug shit with gunplay, damn it, I didn't move all the way down here for this bullshit, I could have kept my ass in Atlanta, so, you know, she meets with her homegirls, Puss in Boots, the feline girls, okay, because she just want to run it by them, and they, you know, her good friends and whatnot. Again, I just sat there and looked at Chinese Nikki for a long time. I was just like, oh, girl, you fucked up your face. Oof. What can they do to move your eyes back, right? <laughs> Did they get pushed together from them cheeks? Because, child, them cheeks are so big. Like, her eyes look like they're getting dumped in the middle like this. It is the strangest thing. Anyway, you know, she's telling Chinese Nikki about gunplay and all the drama that's going on and how she found a dollar bill with the damn, you know, Coke powder residue on it. And Puss was just like, girl, you got to do what's best for you. I know you love them and everything, but still, at the end of the day, it's all about what's going to be working for you. Okay, so take care of you first. Now, Gunplay said he's been struggling ever since Stro died. Okay, shit been hard for him. So he just has decided to really throw himself into his music and into his art. So he's 
at the video shoot, and he tells us that he's grinding, okay? Now, in walks Kiara, because I guess Kiara ain't been able to catch up with him. He walk up to her, and he sort of like, you know, like, what's up? What's up? And she was just like, what's wrong with you? And he was like, what you mean, what's wrong with me? And she was like, you tweaking, nigga. I can look at you and tell you. Are you high? And he says, do I look like I'm high? And I was like, as a matter of fact, you do good play. And she was like, look, I ain't came down here for this bullshit, okay? We came down here, we was trying to get our life going good, but I, I'm not going to be around for you if you're going to be fucking around on drugs and everything again. And he was just like, look, I got to do what I got to do. I got to do this work. Who going to pay the bills? You? I said, like, oh, oh, you did not have to go there with it, man. I, my feelings was hurt for when she when he said that. Like, bitch, you can't do shit. You better be glad I'm taking care of your ass. I was like, oh, okay, good play. That's how it is. She was like, well, let me tell you something. If you don't get your shit together, I'm going to go back to where I was. So you need to get some help or I'm out. And he was like, I don't give a fuck what you're going if you're going to be out going. If you find, think you can find somebody better. Okay, and then that nigga pick up this damn director's chair. <laughs> you know, he's so mad, he going to throw it against the wall. Except he didn't realize it was that heavy. And motherfucker almost threw his whole back out. I said, I know that whole left side hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just like, what you doing? He was like, go on somewhere, just go. Okay, Kira walk out like this fool. Oh, gunplay. I like him. I want him to get it together. I don't want the boy to be on drugs. <laughs> And then lastly, you guys, this damn divorce party, so whatever. You know, Trick is there, you know, the I do, I did, I'm done. Scrappy there. Scrappy was like, I didn't even know you was married. <laughs> you, know, you wild, okay? Yeah, they married. They just been on and off all this time. Miami Tip come up, and, you know, she got the side eye for Trick. You know, this is this is a low blow even for you. You wrong for this shit. Trick was just like, oh, well, you know, she don't want to be married no more, so let's have a party about it, okay? In the meantime, Scrappy go off, and he's enjoying himself with the local color, which would be the strippers that are there. Did you guys notice that Scrappy's hair was cut? This is definitely after the time that him and Bambi probably worked it out. They just had to go in and film this scene probably to help Bucky and her hair save some damn face. He seemed way more lucid in the, in this scene. He's fucking around with the strippers. You know, the girl is dancing and doing all of that in front of him and then the end walks Bucky and her hair. Okay, she gonna have to, you know, tell him something. So she walked up to him and she was like, you know, any nigga that's gonna be with me can't be fucking around with puss and boots, the feline girls. And he was just like, what? I'm supposed to be working with her. You know, Chinese kids. And she was just like, no, no nigga gonna be working with them because if I was with somebody and you didn't like them, you know what? I would cut them off with the quickness. Well, first of all, you not with Scrappy. And I don't understand how many times we got to fucking say this before you get the picture. Okay, damn. Scrappy was just like, I'm sorry, but ain't nobody gonna tell me who I can and cannot fraternize with. We working on this music. Bucky in her hair was like, no, no, we not doing that. So you know what? If you're going to be doing that with them, then I'm going to have to let you go. I'm out. Okay, fine. Bucky in her hair. Girl, go on somewhere. And then as far as Joy, you know, Joy shows up and, you know, she walk up to Trick Daddy, her husband slash ex-husband slash baby daddy slash lover sometimes slash part-time lover slash, you know, man slash he get on my fucking nerves slash whatever the fuck you want to call it. Joy ain't feeling these strippers, but you know what? she came there for a job to do you want to be around all these fuck ass bitches and everything fine okay i'm gonna let you go on and be with them but first of all let me give you this she pull out a piece of paper and it's a bill this is for the lawyers for the divorce trick daddy was just like i'll go on and pay for the divorce i'll pay for the lawyers okay but when i feel like it i was just like see that right there let you know joy and trick they on some bullshit them two ain't never breaking up they're gonna be one of them ones that's you know your uncle and aunt is 70 and 80 years old okay Okay, still coming to the family functions with their new boyfriend and girlfriend, but they still married. Everybody trying to figure out where the fucking um, life insurance policy going to go when somebody die. If it's going to go with the girlfriend or, you know, still with the ex-wife and it's all kind of drama and everybody whispering about it, that's going to be Trick Daddy and Joy. All right, you guys, let me get off of here. I've been talking so long, and I don't even know about what. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.